Well, good morning, everybody. This is Michael with Keller Williams. I'm here with Britt. Uh, she's also with KW, and we've got uh, Nathan. Uh, Nathan, what's the name of your company? Uh, Be My Neighbor Mortgage. Be My Neighbor Mortgage. That's new, right? Yep. Okay. And we've got Zach with uh, Maps Coaching with us today. Zach, thanks for joining us. We wanted to chat with you about, um, you know, what are some of the strategies you're, you're coaching your, your people on in, in a shifting market? What's that look like? You know, it, it's interesting. So I, I have the privilege of coaching some fairly high-end clients, um, and, and we're pleased to death to be in a relationship with you too, Mike. Um, it's a struggle out there right now. The, the market has definitely pivoted. Um, we saw, especially the first quarter of this year, uh, a lot of numbers that were down, and so we had to pivot. And really the focus for those that are, are now thriving in this market is getting back to basics, which is always going to be your database. If you're taking care of your people in your database, we're seeing a 10% return from it right now. And that requires you being in rapport. It's like you and I talk about, you know, there, there's four bullet points for rapport. And when you achieve these four bullet points, you're going to get that 10% return. So it's when they know you, they like you, they trust you, and they believe you have the best solution for them. So if we're reaching out to our people and we're explaining that, and then we're, we're finding ways to navigate this market, we're winning. Do you feel like it is still, are we still teaching 36 touch around that? Like staying in rapport? Is it 72 touches now that we're in this market? Like have we doubled it since we're doubling down on lead gen? What does that look like? That's an awesome question. It, it's, I would say it's more than 36 to get the 10% return, but more, more importantly is the focus on like what I said before is those touches are, are building that rapport. If what I'm doing is helping them know me, like me, trust me, and believe that I have the best solution, then, then I'm, I'm winning with that database. One of the, one of the critical touches when you look at um, reaching out to your database, like this is, this is one that um, you have to have in there is a quarterly phone call. Right now, we know about one out of 20 people in your database is going to be making a move this year. They might not know it because they, have, they haven't had the life yet, life event happen yet. So we need to be reaching out quarterly and just touching base with them. So the, the quarterly phone call is a must. The other touches, Britt, when it comes down to it, I'm going to tell, um, and I tell my agents this, like, if you don't enjoy prospecting, you're, you're doing it wrong. Like, what do we want to do? that's fun to reach out to our database. And so th there are more touches. I personally love events. You know, Britt, you and I have talked about running events. Um, it's a great reason to reach out to our people uh, and you can weave in a lot more touches with that. Um, but it, it's definitely more than 36 uh, if you want that 10% return. Okay, we just don't have a magic number for it. I'm just curious. I mean, like, and that's, that's, totally, that's totally fine, but I think, I think we should know that it's more than 36 now, you know? We if if know. you want that 10% return, you know, I have, yeah. I have clients that literally refuse to make the quarterly phone call. We can still yeah. achieve a 5% return from the database while, while doing a, a different system with that, which isn't bad. That just means you need to add twice as many people to the database. So if you have a way to bring people into your database, and this is something too that we, we talked about before, Britt, like your avatar, who's the perfect person that you want to work with, you know, the kind of person that you'd go sell them a house and then you wouldn't mind going out to dinner with afterwards. Like, where do those people hang out and how can I get into their world and add value? So we still only have to work with people that we like. I do. <laughs> I, I can tell you back when I was actively selling real estate, we were just running leads to get, you know, any buyer or seller into the, the pipeline. And then I remember seeing another team that was starting to outpace us in the office. So like we were closing deal after deal after deal, but then they started to outpace us. And when I, I you know, success leaves clues is a saying we have in KW. Um, so when I looked at where their business was coming from, it was mostly their database. And I had all but given up on my database because I love this idea of, of lead generation where it was like a faucet. I could turn it on, I could generate all these leads, I could close all this stuff, um, but I was getting outpaced by this team. And so, I'm hyper competitive. And so we jumped back into the database. We started doing an event and I invited these people to a movie theater event. And I remember looking into the movie theater, Britt, and I, I saw a bunch of people that I didn't like. There was one guy in particular that would always talk bad about his wife and it just drove me nuts. And I thought, 
I'm going to only work with the people that I want to work with. And I, so I cut my group down and in, uh, into, uh, I call it the Epic 300, 300 people that I would be thrilled to sell my house, but be thrilled to go out to, to dinner with. And those are my core people. And I still have that in my businesses today. Uh, my core group of people that put a smile on my face. Yep. So what about agents that don't necessarily have a database, right? You've got a brand new agent that just got into the business and you know, they just moved into town and they don't have a huge database to, to, to call quarterly and to touch 36 times, 50 times. You know, what, what are some things these agents can do to, to start building that database? Uh, while, they, while, you know, while they get into business? That's, that's an amazing question. And I love that question because it, it, this is part of the, the gamification that you and I talk about. Um, I am going to have that person start with defining with clarity their avatar. Who is the person that they want to work with? When I was, when I was uh, selling real estate, um, my perfect person was someone that loved God, loved their family, and loved you know making money, you know being being an entrepreneur. And I found a lot of those people at my church, and so that is one source that you could go to. Uh, a friend of mine, she lives in a very small town, uh, another Keller Williams agent, rock star agent. The the size of the town is like thirteen thousand people. Mike, um, she sold six hundred houses last wow. year with a, with a population of 13,000. Know, she goes into the outskirts of town, but um, I asked her the same question too. And she said the same thing. I'm going to identify the person that I want to work with. And I said, if I, if I moved you from this town and I put you in a different place, how would you start over? She said, I would, I would identify the person I want to work with. I'd go see what charities are in the area. I would go work at that charity. I'd work my butt off I would start making relationships with these people. So she's bringing them into the database and I'd start servicing them and then ask for referrals from that person. You know, something else, Mike, that we talk about, you can go door knocking. We could call for sale by owners. We could call expireds. We could get something in the pipeline. But when we teach people how to treat us, we're going to get referrals from our clients. If we set that as an expectation, you know, look, Mike, I'm going to list your house, but I kind of want to play a game. Here with you. Not only do I want to sell your house for the most amount of money with the least amount of hassle and the best time for you, but I want to do such a good job that you're falling over yourself to refer me a couple of people like yourself. And when I set the stage like that and I weave touches throughout the transaction, their selective attention is raised and I'm going to find more business there. And so you can create a, a business that multiplies itself there. And so if I didn't have a huge database, I'm going to find where my avatar, where my group hangs out. I'm going to go in there and see how I can add value. And then I'm going to grow the business from there. I like that. What would you say to, so I, um, my story, like when I first started, I was only, I tried right out of high school and I thought that I was going to get my license and the phone was going to start ringing and I was going to start closing deals. Well, Michael got his out of high school, too, like in the 70s. Oh. Um, but I, <laughs> when I graduated after 2010. Um, <laughs> no. 2010? Jeez, no, actually, I graduated man. in 2012. Um, no, just kidding. What is that? It was 2011. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> no, the question is. That's awesome. The question, though, like, so I got my license. I didn't do much with it the first time around. I just let it lapse because I didn't have any, I didn't have the proper guidance, um, didn't know what I was doing. And then when I got back in, I was still only like 24 or 23. And so the average age of a real estate agent in the state of Colorado was like 56 or 58 or something at the time. Yeah. And I think it still is pretty high, like until, you know, because so many... because they never surrender that license. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> there's always a chance that yeah. one deal coming through. Right. Well, and now there's like, there's an influx of, of newer people getting into the industry. Um, but when I was so young and I was like, I felt, I felt like I ended up having an identity crisis because the people who were my age weren't able to buy houses yet. I mean, fast forward to now, we know that like 50% of the population under the age of 30 is living at home. But like I couldn't, I couldn't find people my age, um, or people in my my sphere that were able or ready to buy a house at the time. So I had to expand, and I had to get to know people who were older than me. But then I was like so desperate to make all of these people my best friend that I just was, 
you know, bending over backwards to try and make people try and make people like and accept me. Um, and I almost like hung my license up so many, so, so many times because it was like I was trying to I was trying too hard. Um, and I feel like when I finally just decided that I was going to be 100 percent authentically, unapologetically myself, I started attracting the people that I wanted to work with. And then those relationships happened that much faster. Um, they became deeper connections that much faster. And then the referrals still came. So, I mean, I still, I still tell new agents, it's like, yeah, you want to, you want to go out. It still is a numbers game. Even when you're looking at it from that perspective, like still go out and meet as many people as you possibly can. And you'll still find the ones that you really no, like and trust. I mean, I don't know. Like, what what would you say if if would you agree with that? Would you say that I'm completely wrong for thinking that no, way? I, would you I think would, that I would totally agree with that? There's a a power to be had with models here, and this this is the the teachable moment. You know, there's there's a few different ways that we can become successful in real estate. Um, number one, we can wait for it, and that's what I did in the beginning. Like, I was not quitting. I knew this was a path that I could make the the money that I wanted to make to have the lifestyle I wanted to have. Um, my wife and I wanted to have a ridiculous amount of children and we have a ridiculous amount of children. We want to travel with these kids. And so we need to make money to do this. And so I knew there was a way I saw other people being you successful. You want to have a ridiculous amount of children and travel with them? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just yes. making sure I heard. Okay. You got like what? Eight kids? You have yes. eight now? Eight. Oh my gosh, I'm, an, I I'm, an only, I'm an only child. I'm an only child. So I, ne I needed to make a lot of money. Like we wanted to do you know, like all the stuff. And so. Creating um, the life he wanted when he grew up. <laughs> he said, yeah, anyway, yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah. I love um, it. So three ways to be successful in real estate. Number one, wait for it. And that's what I did in the beginning, which is a bad way to do it. Cause it sucks. Cause you're, you're, you're poor for a long time. And then you gradually learn and you, you figure stuff out. Number two, this way kind of sucks too, is you pay for it. So you go to Zillow who made like $2 billion off of us last year. I pay for leads doing that. Or I go to realtor.com or I go to Commissions Inc or Boomtown, any of these different places. I pay for leads. Number three is you earn it. And what I mean by earn it is you look for those models that are successful and you implement those models and you don't deviate from those models until you're successful. Then you can create new models. And that's something important that I just said there. Find the model, implement the model, when you're successful at the money, then you can start to create new models. The mm -hmm. focus needs to be, Britt, just like you said, with that database in the beginning. Now, I was a junior high youth minister before I became a real estate agent. And I had a very big database. So I thought I'm going to get my real estate license, maybe a little bit like you, Britt. And like, people are just going to send me business. Like, I'm going to crush it. I got my real estate license and no one in my, my world wanted to talk to me about real estate, wanted to have me sell their house. And what I realized is even though they trusted me to take their kids on like a mission trip across the country, they knew me, they liked me, they trusted me with their children, but they didn't trust me with their most expensive asset because it was the fourth thing that I didn't have yet. They didn't know that I had the best solution for kids. them. <laughs> What's that? They care more about their house and their money than their kids. No, that, it, it, I, I'm, I kind of make a joke out of it, but like, I'll tell him you said it's that. our most expensive asset for most people. Your house, for the vast majority of how, uh, people, your house is your most expensive asset. And well, yeah, I trust you with the kids because I know you're trustworthy. You're going to keep them safe. But this is my house. So I want to find someone else that really knows it. And so they didn't know I had the best solution. So when we look at going back to that touch campaign, which you're spot on, you can make more money than you ever want, more money than you want in real estate when you, you understand rapport and you build your database. They know you, they like you, they trust you, they believe you have the best solution for them. You'll be unstoppable in any market. Yep. Well, I know we've only got a few minutes left with you, Zach. Uh, can you wrap it up for us with some mindset? I know there's a lot of fear in the market right now. Uh, how, do we, how do agents keep their mindset right in a shifting market? He says, I have eight kids. If I can do it, anybody can. Have a great day. <laughs> Take your excuses somewhere else. Hey, Mike job. <laughs> mindset, Mike, is, is absolutely critical. Henry Ford said, you know, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. We mm -hmm. hang out with... Uh, toxic people um 
and that's some harsh language there, but you know, they're in, they're in every real estate office in the world. There's less of them in Keller Williams offices because we talk about culture. We talk about mindset. Things are challenging right now. And if you start to doubt in yourself, it, it's, it's a snowball effect. So focusing on things that are tried and true and, and having belief in yourself is, is absolutely imperative right now. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. What you focus on, this is another Keller Williamsism. what you focus on expands. If I focus on, oh my gosh, the interest rates are high. Oh my gosh, there's a lack of inventory. Oh my gosh, then that's, that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more of that. Yep. If I look for the model, when we were in a market before and we had 7%, 8%, 12% interest rates, what did people do? We can look at assumptions. We can look at buy downs. We can look at all these things, or we can look at common sense. Like, look, Mr. Buyer, historically, these rates are pretty good. Now we got addicted to the, the 2%, 3% interest rates. Like that, that was insane. And I'll bet you a Starbucks cup of coffee, we will never see that again in our lifetime. 7%, 8% interest rates. Well, they're not fun compared to the lower ones. That's pretty normal. And yeah. here's the other thing I'll say. When you fix your mindset and you start understanding really how to attract people to you, like you and I talk about this, you know, the different kinds of lead gen um, that we're doing and the things that you're doing for your office too, for your agents, which is awesome. So many brokers that I were, at, I would have killed to have you as a broker. My, 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 most of my brokers were like, Hey, good luck. <laughs> give me, give me a check once a month. Good luck. And you're, you're helping your agents with lead generation and doing all those things. The thing that I'll say about lead generation is good leads are the enemy of great leads. If I find a buyer that has 20% down, but they're looking for that smoking hot deal, they're just sitting on the fence. I would rather get on the phone and prospect to find that person's like, Hey, my family just moved to Colorado. I need to, I need to get there now. Like we, we we're starting school in a month. I have to buy a house. Now that person's out there. If we prospect or do the right things to attract that person, we're going to fill our pipeline full of those people. So mindset. Yeah, you're right, Mike. Absolutely. That's, the, that's where we start first. That's probably 60, 70% of the battle. And then it's but implementing models. Yeah. 100%. It's that it's mindset then models. And I know you have to go, but I just have to say like, that that mindset piece that what you focus on expands is actually like it's not just a, a a la la land thing it's been scientifically proven with quantum physics so ask me anything i'll tell you <laughs> thank you so I much Zach. Appreciate all you. right you guys hopefully we can do this again yeah see ya <laughs> thanks Zach. see ya bye